we are nine episodes in i think it's safe to say we can start counting down because we have three more episodes left in this season this is the review of episode nine of shaka ilembe season one let's jump straight into it so i'm going to start with the main plot in this episode which was the war between mawewe and kotongwana this was such an obvious win we knew that kotongwana was going to win this war because since the time that mawewe betrayed his brothers we saw the journey that kotongwana took building up his forces in anticipation for the day that he needs to come back and fight for his throne and just the mere fact that he was betrayed by his his brother gave him that passion that spirit inside of him to have to come back and fight and make things right so mawewe essentially lost this war the day that he betrayed his brothers and i don't know what you're gonna say but mawewe was bewitched and yes that is true but if you go back to episode 3, you'll see that Mawewe actually had this desire to become the king before he was bewitched. And this is what Queen Dombazi used as a weak link inside of him to lure him and end up bewitching him so that he acts on the desire that's already inside of him. And this action just proves his cowardice. You know, we see his cowardly behavior throughout this episode the fact that he sent men out on the battlefield to go and fight for him, to lay down his life for him, and he can't even be there with him. That faced against a man who has been for 18 years waiting for this moment to fight for his kingship, fight for his right to be back with his people. There's no way that Mawewe was winning this war. So it was a done deal the day that Mawewe betrayed his brothers and the day that Kodongwana entered into his exile so there's no surprise there and next up is Shaka we see him maturing a little bit more in this episode just after his heartbreak um, from his father in the previous episode he's now starting to accept the Kwabe people as his people Kwabe palace as his home and he's also starting to accept Ugendeyana as his father we see some sweet very very lovely moments between the two of them bonding and starting to share that father-son and develop that father-son relationship between the two of them. Shaka is now opening up to Gendayana, is now able to ask Gendayana, please train me, show me, teach me. And Gendayana is more than willing. I mean, he's always been there for Shaka. The mere fact that in the previous episode, after seeing how much of a delinquent that Shaka is becoming, he decides to draft him in the army. For me, it's an act of love because he wants to show Shaka the right way. He wants to teach him in the ways of being a man. And he opened that door for him, waiting for Shaka to choose to walk through it. And in this episode, he does. And it's just lovely to see. Gendayana is such an amazing man. He's such a true example of what it means to become a parent to a child that you did not father and he does it so well he's really such a great example of a man who loves his woman and loves his woman's children as if their own and he's a man of such great character and this is properly displayed in this episode but yo the war guys why can we not have nice things why does it have to be that as soon as we see this lovely bond forming between Shaka and Gendayana that they just like take that away from us and Ukendayana is injured in war. And it's all because Shaka still has more maturing to do. That speech that Nandi gave Shaka at the end of the episode really shows and reveals to Shaka that as much as you think and believe that you are a man and you've grown, you still have a long way to go. She's so right when she says that, how is he going to be a king? How is he meant to lead people when he cannot be led himself? Being disobedient automatically disqualifies you from having the right or being able to have people obey you. So this was such a very sad, sad episode but I think it's also another one of those experiences that Shaka needs to forge him into the man that he's to become. 
he needs to be a man of strong character, a man of strong principles, and a man who understands the chain of command. Because at some point, he's going to be at the top of that command. This was a very painful moment for Ushaga coming off the back of him opening his arms up to Gendayana and embracing him. And this is what happens. But I still have hope that Gendayana is still alive. Yes, they're saying he's dead. Sharp, I get that. But we did see at the end of the episode that they in the heart, man, there were people mixing herbs and stuff and applying it to him. And how if Gondogwana can survive a spear through his stomach, why can't Gendayana survive? Please, guys, don't let it be dead. Oh, I'm also forgetting the fact that Shaka fought in his first war in this episode and he performed. I mean, he even caught the attention of Ukodongwana, who's a seasoned warrior who's fought many wars. So that's just a little showcase of the future Shaka that we know him to be today. This man who is brilliant at war. That was very interesting to watch. So another thing that I noticed in this episode was just the comparisons and the contrasts that were presented in this episode. Firstly, a comparison between two really great men, Ukotongwana and Ugendeyana, who essentially had to face off against each other in the war. Kodongwana is really such a strong man of character, a man of strong principles, a warrior as well, suited to be king and to sit on the throne at the Mteta Palace. And we see the same and similar character traits within Ukendeyana as well. He's a strong man of character, strong man of principle. And he's also a warrior, just unfortunately not a king. But I just love to see that comparison between the two of them. And the other contrast that was made that I noticed was between Ukodongwana and Shaka. More of a contrast because Godongwana, when you think of him, you see him being the king. He embodies the character of being a king. He's strong. He's very principled. He believes in doing things the right way. And he's a strong warrior, right? But with Shaka, he also is now on his journey to becoming king. But he's not quite there in character the same way that Kotongwana is. Shaka is still immature. You know, he still does not really understand the chain of command he's still a youth in in the sense that he believes that he can just do what he likes when he when he wants not very principled just yet and there's still a long way to go so i think they were just showing us a little bit of a gap between the ideal king and the the disparity or the gap between this ideal king and where shaka is right now and the journey that he has to travel to get to that point. Am I imagining things? Let me know. So those are the two main plots in this episode. But what I really wanted to focus on in this episode is the casting on the show of Shaka Ilembe. These guys are doing such an amazing job. We've already spoken about Zuite, who's played by Wiseman Mube. We've spoken about Queen Dombazi, who's played by Kabunina Kubeka. We've spoken about Yang Shaka played by Ndando Zondi. And in this episode, I want to speak about Temingosim Tembu, who plays the role of Kotongwana slash Deniswayo. He is doing an impeccable job on this character. He really embodies the character of Udeniswayo, of Ukotongwana. I mean, Kotongwana is a man that has been through a lot. He is a man who has needed to be strong who has needed to be courageous, who is a warrior as well. And I don't know, man, Tim Kosim Timbu has like this alpha male energy about him that really suits the role of Kotongwana so well. He's doing an amazing job. Just a few facts about him. He actually has a diploma in drama and production studies from the Durban University of Technology. His very first role was as junior on The Republic. And he's also been in the river as Mabuto. And most recently, he was on Adulting, the show Max original. Also an amazing show. If you haven't watched it, go check it out. And in that series, he was playing Ubonga. So 
even in the role of Bonga, Temingo Sim Tembu had this alpha male energy about him. I haven't watched The Republic. I haven't watched The River. So I can't really comment about the way he acted or the way he portrayed his roles in those series. Serieses? What's the plural of series? But yes, I can't comment on his performance in those two um, shows. But in the role of Bonga in adulting and in the role of Kotongwana in Shaka Ilembe, he, sh he has this like alpha male image about him. So I'm not sure if he's just being typecast for this role or if those are just the nature of the roles that he's playing in. You know what I mean? Temingo Simtembu has also recently been cast in a new Showmax original called Outlaw. I want to watch this show as well, but I'm just a little bit reluctant because judging from the trailer, it just seems like it's going to be so predictable, not very original in the storyline. But here's what I want to do. I'm going to upload a reaction to the trailer of Outlaw. And let's just try and dissect the storyline and what we can expect in the show. And also maybe predict a few of the plots that might unfold in the story. Then let's watch it together. Let's watch the show together when it starts airing. And see how close I got with my predictions. What do you guys think about that? But back to the topic. Tembin Kosim Tembu is doing a really amazing job with the character of Godongwana slash Dingiswayo. Perfect costume. Even the casting of Mawewe was done so well. Mawewe is played by Wanda Zuma. And Wanda really embodies this character of a villain so well. Because you just love to hate him. Don't you just hate that guy's guts? I mean, I was relishing the moment when Okotongwana eventually got to beat him. Because he was just so annoying. And usually when I feel so strong about a character, especially a villain, that's always a sign to me that... They did an amazing job with casting and that the actor really was acting the role perfectly because they were able to portray the emotions that they wanted the viewer to feel about their character so well that you even forget that they're acting. So Wanda did an amazing job with Mawewe as well. But that is it for now for the review of Shaka Ilembe season one, episode nine. What did you guys think of the episode? What do you think is going to happen in the next episode? I mean, we're kind of left not really knowing where the story is going. Let's meet next week for the review of episode 10. And let's meet on Sunday on Twitter when the episode is. Um, I'll be doing a space as well at 9 o'clock after episode 10 is. So that we just discuss our first impressions of the episode. I'll leave a link to that space in the description but let's meet again next week. I cannot wait. Bye.